It's okay, babies. It's okay. It's okay, babies. He can't hurt you anymore. He can't hurt you anymore. Oh, Zero, you're shaking. It's okay, baby. <laughs> Resident Evil, the final chapter. The last film in this insufferable franchise that I have to waste my life watching in theaters. No more after this, Paul Anderson is finally done. <laughs> yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. Resident Evil, the final chapter stars Mila Jovovich as the ass-kicking Alice, Ian Glenn as that guy who died in the third movie and is somehow alive here, and Ali Larder and Sean Roberts playing the only characters who actually exist in the fucking games, so obviously they're relegated to the background and have nothing to do. But hey, the story from the games has already been relegated to the fucking dumpster at this point, so why the hell not? As you can probably tell, this movie series really pisses me off because I am a huge fan of the Resident Evil games. I love this series, it's my favorite gaming franchise of all time. I've even played the bad shit in this gaming series, but even the worst of the games are better than these movies. I mean, in all seriousness, if you're making the storyline from Resident Evil Dead Aim look good, you might want to stop writing and just consider a new career path, that's all I'm saying. And I'm sorry, but all these movies have done is making complete mockery of all these games. Listen, you know, I, I can understand that they're adaptation, and adaptations you have to make changes. I get that. I really, really get that. But the changes they made from the games to the films were so drastic and unnecessary that it is fucking baffling to me that this series has been successful as it's been. The fact that in one weekend, this film made more than silence at the box office fucking scares me. I, we're failing. That's, that's, that's really all I have to say. We're just failing. But the fact remains that this series keeps making money because it has a fan base. Now, are you a fan of this series? Are you on board with these movies? Have you liked them up until now? If your answer was yes, normally I would just shrug and say, whatever, go see it then. Have fun with your stupid movie franchise, just keep it as far away as you can from me, you know, to each their own. I'm not doing that this time. Oh no, 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 no. I'm not doing that this time. And if you are a fan of this film franchise, let me just say that I'm not trying to stop you from seeing this movie just because I hate it and think it's garbage. No, 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 no. I am trying to stop you from seeing this movie because it treats you, the fans who have loved this movie series up until now and just don't get the hate, like fucking idiots. And just to clarify again, that's not how I see you. That's how this film sees you. That's how Paul Anderson's writing sees you. It treats you all like fucking morons who will just eat up anything with the Resident Evil title on it. Resident Evil, the final chapter, is the worst film in this series by a landslide. No doubt in my mind. So, what exactly makes it worse than the other ones? Would you believe me if I told you that in the first 15 minutes, this film has all the other films not make any sense? I mean... The other films have some plot holes, but Resident Evil The Final Chapter doesn't have plot holes. No, Resident Evil The Final Chapter has plot canyons. Like, honestly, all the people who bitch about all the continuity errors in the Star Wars prequels, I never want to hear you bitch again for as long as you fucking live. You have not seen, you have not experienced continuity errors until you have seen Resident Evil The Final Chapter. I have never in my life seen so many continuity errors in one movie, and I have seen Highlander 2. Oh yes, I said it. This movie is worse than Highlander 2. It's worse than all the Highlander sequels. See, the Highlander sequels at least have the distinction that they were all written by different people, so you can understand why there's some continuity errors. All six of these movies were written by the same fucking guy! The guy who claimed in interviews that he had a plan for the series from the beginning. If I was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to wrap up the franchise, I always knew that that wrap up would be a return to Raccoon City, to the hive, to where everything began. It would be Alice going home and Alice discovering the truth about herself. The woman we met in the first movie suffered from memory loss and she never got that memory back. So really she is unaware of who she really is and, and I've been aware of who she is throughout the entire franchise and I've been waiting a long time to wrap things up and tell the audience the truth of who the Alice character is, how that relates to the Red Queen, 
and what the real agenda of the Umbrella Corporation has been all along. So why was there absolutely no continuity here, Paul? I mean, seriously, going back to what I said earlier, if there was ever a time for the prequel haters to just apologize to George Lucas, now's the time. Like, this is it, folks. This is it. Don't get much worse than this. And you know what? Screw it. I, I have to make myself heard. So, spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled, I don't care. I suffered through this. I deserve to rip this movie a new asshole properly. So, that being said, now we're gonna play a little game called The Top 5 Plot Canyons in Resident Evil The Final Chapter. Number 5. The Antivirus. Okay, so the main plot of this movie involves the Red Queen recruiting Alice to stop the spread of the virus by going back to the hive and collecting the antivirus, which, if shattered on the ground, will disperse through the airwaves, thus ending the 10-year zombie apocalypse. So you're honestly gonna tell me with a straight face that all anyone had to do this entire time was smash a vial of the antivirus on the ground and that would have ended the whole apocalypse. Like, that was it? Um, okay, don't know why no one thought to do that before. I mean, the T-Virus was clearly an airborne toxin in the first film. It stands to reason the antivirus would be an airborne toxin as well. Number four, the Red Queen. The Red Queen is helping Alice every step of the way, even though it was trying to kill her in the last movie. I am in control now. Project Alice, Ada Wong, stay where you are. Let's move. Project Alice. You're all going to die down here. I've heard that before. The Red Queen wants to stop the infection, even though the last movie established that the Red Queen had taken over Umbrella, that's completely abandoned by the way, and was clearly trying to spread the infection. Who's giving these orders? The Red Queen. The computer? Yes. The same artificial intelligence you encountered in the hive. She now controls what remains of the Umbrella Corporation. She will stop at nothing to prevent you escaping to the surface. The Red Queen isn't modeled after Angela Ashford, even though the first and second film clearly said that she was. Yeah, you know what? More on this later. Number three, Wesker is Dr. Isaac's little bitch. Yeah, Wesker is taking orders from Dr. Isaacs now and is said to be merely an employee of Umbrella. This is in complete contrast to Resident Evil Extinction, where Dr. Isaacs was taking orders from Wesker, was clearly intimidated and threatened by Wesker, and where Wesker was the fucking chairman of Umbrella. Chairman Wesker, I've been busy. And perhaps we should place someone else in charge. Someone who can give us the reassurances we require. Continue your research, Doctor. Well, it still is your research. Oh, but there's more. Evidently, it was Wesker's job to kill Alice in Resident Evil Retribution. Th th why the fuck did he save her? So I've arranged for a strike team to enter from the surface and assist you. If it was his job to kill Alice in that film, then why did he send an entire strike team to save her and Ada and recruit them for that supposed last stand we never got to see? What was even the point? Seriously, all he had to do was leave her in that facility and let her die. Oh, and just on a side note, it took a volcano and a bazooka to take out Wesker in the games. In this film, all it takes is a falling door. Albert Wesker, the uber badass from the games, gets taken out by a door falling on him. And to add insult to injury, how would he die from that? He has the fucking T-Virus! He survived getting his head blown off in Afterlife, but now a door is giving him the axe? Oh, fuck this! Number two. Alice is really a clone that was placed in the mansion 10 years ago. What happened to her being a security operative for Umbrella? She was married to the guy who caused the outbreak in the first place. Her civilian name was Giannis Prospero, and she was working within the company to try and stop them. Where did all that go? In Resident Evil Extinction, Isaac's research for curing the viral outbreak was hell-bent on him finding Alice because, as he put it, she was the original. But no, we find out that Alice was the daughter of Dr. Marcus, the creator of the T-Virus. Her real name is not Giannis Prospero or Alice, it's Alicia. 
Yeah, because that sounds nothing like Alice at all. And Dr. Marcus actually modeled the Red Queen after Alicia when she was a child. Oh, you know, and, and the real Alice is this old woman in a wheelchair who had this disease that aged her rapidly or, or some shit like that. Okay. First of all, you already established in Resident Evil Apocalypse that Dr. Ashford created the T-Virus, not Dr. Marcus. Second, the film also makes it clear that the Red Queen was modeled after his daughter, Angela Ashford, not Alicia Marcus. Lastly, saying that she had no prior existence before the events of the mansion in the first film is BULLSHIT because you clearly showed that she had a fucking existence in flashbacks in the first movie. My fucking god! And the number one plot canyon in Resident Evil The Final Chapter is... Umbrella's plan this whole time was to wipe out humanity via Noah's Ark logic. Okay, so his plan this entire time... was to wipe out humanity. This was apparently Umbrella's objective as well. Then why the fuck was he trying to cure the virus in extinction?! Why did he even bother trying to replicate Alice's blood to try and synthesize a cure if he never WANTED one?! Why were the Umbrella board members worried about having to spend decades underground if that was their original intention anyway? I mean... My god, are you fucking kidding me with this shit?! Okay, so we somehow went from some asshole releasing the virus to cover his tracks to Umbrella wanting the apocalypse to happen. I... I... I can't. I, I, I can't, guys. I, I, I need a break. I'm sorry. I, 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 I can't. <laughs> that monster can't hurt you no more. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm fine. I'm fine. So, do you see what I mean now when I say that this film treats even the most loyal fans like complete fucking idiots? Y you see? You see it now? Case in point, nothing about this film or its storyline makes any fucking sense. I mean, I kind of expected that going in, but not to such an insulting degree. To the fans of this film, there is not a single thing in this movie that treats you as thinking people. Nothing. Now on to the characters. <laughs> what fucking characters? The only one who gets any sort of resolution or intrigue is Alice, and the entire backstory given to her, as we've established, makes no sense with what's come before. Claire Redfield literally could have been replaced with any other character from the Resident Evil gaming franchise and it wouldn't have made a fucking difference. Her entire presence here is completely fucking pointless. It's here for fan service and nothing else and they can't even get the fan service part right. The rest of the characters are fucking cannon fodder. There's no attention paid to them at all. You don't care if one of them dies and at times it's hard to even tell who dies because the editing in this film is so sporadic and terrible. There were several points in this film where I couldn't tell who died. I had to wait until the next scene for Paul Anderson to spastically cut back and forth between each character just so I could know who died. I'm not even joking when I say this is quite literally one of the worst edited films I've ever seen. The action scenes are so terribly choreographed and edited together that it's damn near impossible to tell who's getting shot, who's getting hit, or even who's fighting! It's such a mishmash of choppy editing that honestly, I, I want to write a formal apology to whoever edited the theatrical cut of Batman v Superman. Dude, you're forgiven. Actually, no, you're not. You're, you're, you're fucking horrible too, but you, you get the idea here. The film just drags and drags along until it can get to the next action set pieces, but none of the action set pieces are good! Is it awesome watching Mila Jovovich kick ass? Of course! It always is! But I can watch a good movie for that! The look of this film is so murky, dreary, and ugly. This is an ugly looking movie. The shaky cam and poor lighting don't help it either. There are so many scenes in this film that are shot in the dark, and every scene like that is just loud and horrible. That's another thing here. This movie has some of the worst fucking sound design I've ever witnessed in a film. Once the story starts, with Mila Jovovich coming out of the bunker, we are treated to what feels like a never-ending barrage of fucking jump scares. Needless to say, within 15 minutes of this movie, 
I hated life and had a massive migraine. Not a good combination. The acting? <laughs> what acting? <laughs> oh, God. Mila Jovovich, as she always does in these films, clearly gives it her all. But her character is such a mishmash of nonsensical shit by the time this film ends, it's even hard to appreciate the performance she's giving. There's this moment towards the end that they try to force in, where you're supposed to feel so much sympathy and compassion for this character, and I didn't feel shit. Not because of Mila Jovovich, but because the film did nothing to earn that compassion. It treats its audience like idiots, and by that point, it was way past gaining my respect. Oh, something else that happens in the end too? They leave it open-ended for another sequel. So, final chapter, my ass. Look, there's another reason these movies piss me off so much that I've never mentioned before. And I feel I should just get it out in the open now. That reason is, I don't want to hate Paul W.S. Anderson. I don't! I don't want to hate these movies. Do you honestly think that I want to hate adaptations of my favorite video game series? Fuck no! And I certainly don't want to hate Anderson. Paul Anderson made Mortal Kombat, which I liked. He made Event Horizon, which I also really liked. I see videos of this guy in interviews and panels, and all I can think is, this guy seems really compassionate. He seems to really know his shit. I just wish that once, just once, that passion he had showed in these films, or at least the ones he directed. For six movies, that passion was sadly never present on the screen, and the fact that he threw all of this mind-insulting crap at the audience at the zero hour of the franchise really pisses me off. I don't mind that he makes this a whole family affair. He got to work with his wife in this film. His daughter played the Red Queen in this film. That's great that he can have fun with his family making movies. You know what? There's no reason he can't make a good movie with his family. But, you know what guys, I'm sorry. Resident Evil The Final Chapter is the single worst video game film I have ever fucking seen. Hands down, there's no contest, this is it, the worst of the worst. Every second of this movie was insufferable. The plot made no sense the entire way through. The characters were disposable. The special effects were garbage. The action set pieces were horribly set up and executed. The sound design was beyond obnoxious, and the film looked hideous. This is an ugly looking movie. I'm not even joking this when I say this is the worst film I have seen in such a long time. And to give you an idea of how much I don't like it, I would give. Independence Day 2, a fucking Oscar, before I considered this quality entertainment. Resident Evil, the final chapter, without question, gets an F. Fuck this damn movie and good riddance to this franchise. We can only fucking hope. So did you see this garbage over the weekend? Please comment, let me know if you did, and please subscribe if you want to see more. Oh, God, I need a drink.